What's up everybody, it's great to see your smiling faces today. In this video, I will show you how to run a one-way analysis of variance in Excel with a post hoc follow-up. Now it's important to remember that we use one-way ANOVAs when we have multiple groups, more than two groups, and we are interested in whether there's a difference in means. The real question we're asking is, do all of these groups come from the same population? or are some of these groups, some of these samples from a different population. However, it doesn't tell us exactly which groups are different from which other groups. And so we have to run a post hoc analysis, typically pairwise comparisons, if we get a significant p-value and a large enough f value from our ANOVA. In this video, I'll show you how to do that in Excel with a Bonferroni adjustment to limit or at least decrease family-wise error. Now, if you wanna follow along with me in this video, I've linked the file that I'm using down in the description below. You can go ahead and click on that, download the Excel file, open it up and follow along. All right, here we are in the data set. And the first thing we want to look at is how many groups we have. And so we have three groups of athletes. We have tennis athletes, football athletes, and basketball athletes. And the dependent variable here is IPF. And so if you're not familiar with that, in sports science and kinesiology, that stands for typically isometric peak force. So what we've done is we've taken all these athletes and we've measured the maximum amount of force that they can generate isometrically, meaning their joint angles don't actually change when they're generating it. And so this is a very safe and reliable way to test the maximum strength that an athlete can develop. Now, it's expressed in newtons, not in pounds or kilograms, so don't think that these are su superhuman athletes. And it's typical to see ranges anywhere from the low 2000s to the uh, low to mid 6000s in total body isometric peak force. Now the question we are interested in tackling is, is there a difference between tennis players, football players, and basketball players in their expression of isometric peak force? Or essentially, are any of these groups of athletes stronger than any other groups of athletes. Now, the first thing to do in Excel is to arrange these in separate columns. If this was SPSS, we could keep it in the same column, but because it's Excel, we have to separate this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in fast motion. Okay, now we have our strength data arranged by sport. So it's grouped by our independent variable. And the only thing we need to do to run our ANOVA is highlight all of this go up to data and over to the data analysis tool pack and we want to go up to ANOVA. Now there's three different options here and we want a single factor ANOVA because we remember we just have one uh, independent variable and that would be sport that's dividing these uh, data into groups. So we click OK and the input range, I guess I'll just highlight that again the labels are in the first row. We want our alpha set to 0 0.05. And let's select the output range as right here next to our data. And we click OK. All right, now look at this. We have a nice little descriptive table right here, this summary table. We can check out the averages from each group. And let's look at those averages first. So it looks like Football definitely has the highest average peak force that they generated, 5,594 newtons of peak force, followed by basketball and then tennis players. And that sort of lines up with our assumptions too. Football players tend to be larger, more muscular um, athletes. Basketball players, they're tall and lanky, but they're also large. And so perhaps the absolute peak force that they can generate would be uh, bigger than some of our tennis players who, who you know, are more uh, medium sized athletes, medium to small sized athletes. Now let's look down at our ANOVA table. So we get the sum of squares here and the uh, between groups and within groups and then the total sum of squares, degrees of freedom, and then the mean squares between and within. And remember, it's the ratio of the between mean squares and the within mean squares or the error mean squares and that gives you the f value now that's a large f value and it looks like the critical f statistic that we had to uh, meet or exceed in order to have a statistically significant result was just 3.16 about and and we've done that <laughs> and more with that with this large of an f value and then we also get our p value which is in incredibly small so we can say then that there is a difference somewhere uh, in these three groups of athletes. But we don't know if 
each of them is statistically significant from the other two groups, or perhaps there's just one group. Perhaps those football players are statistically significant from basketball and tennis, but tennis and basketball are not different from each other. And we're not really sure where those differences lie. So we have to do a follow-up post hoc analysis. Now in Excel, the easiest post hoc analysis to perform is a Bonferroni adjusted uh, pairwise comparison. And the reason is because for Bonferroni adjustments, all you have to do is divide your critical alpha, uh, which is 0 0.05 in this case, by the number of pairwise comparisons that you're making. Doing this reduces your chances of type one error. Uh, as we know, if we uh, run multiple simple comparisons or multiple t-tests on the same set of data, we increase our alpha level with each new test that we run, therefore increasing the chance of a false positive, and we don't wanna do that. So let's um, go ahead and run some t-tests. We have to run t-tests to compare tennis to football, tennis to basketball, and football to basketball. And then we will uh, uh, correct it using the Bonferroni correction, and then see what our results are. So to start the pairwise comparisons, we will use a t-test. So we'll go back up to data, data analysis, and we wanna select t-test assuming equal variances. So two samples assuming equal variances. I know that variances are equal because I generated this data set uh, right before making this video. So we'll click OK. OK, let's select the variable ranges. So we're going to start with tennis compared to football. OK, we have the labels alpha at 0 0.05 and output range. Let's just put it right here underneath our ANOVA table. Click OK. And then before we look at that, let's go ahead and do the other two comparisons. So we did tennis and football. Now let's do tennis and basketball, and then football and basketball. And I'll go ahead and speed that up for you. OK, so we've run our pairwise comparisons to see which of these groups has a statistically significant difference from the other groups. We don't know if it's just one or if all of them are different from each other. We just know that our ANOVA told us that there is a difference somewhere in these groups. Now, remember, we want to limit that family-wise error, uh, the type 1 error, false positives, that come from running too many uh, tests on the same group of data. And so to do that, we'll adjust our alpha level. So we're going to take it from 0 0.05, which is what we had it set at, and we will divide it by the total number of comparisons that we made. And we made three comparisons, so it's 0 0.05 divided by 3. So here are the very low p-values for each of these comparisons. And so it looks like without adjustment that each of these comparisons are significant. So there's a significant difference between all of these uh, teams. Now, if you understand scientific notation, you can tell that these are very low p-values. So even dividing 0 0.05 by 3, it seems like we will have significant differences across the board. Now, we're going to do it anyways, just so I can show you a, a nice, easy way to do it. They go equal 0 0.05 divided by 3. And so this is the new critical alpha. So we type equals is this number less than or equal to this number. Click enter and it says true. So in that case, our comparison between tennis and football is significant. There's a significant difference between tennis athletes and football athletes in isometric peak force. So let's just highlight these, copy and paste them underneath each of our other simple comparisons. And it looks like even with the Bonferroni adjustment, we have a statistically significant difference between uh, each of the two teams that we compare. Okay guys, that's how you run a one-way ANOVA analysis in Excel. Now you can do this with three or more groups. So even if you have, you know, five, 10, 15 groups, this will work, this process will work in Excel. Now you have to remember, this is only if you have one independent factor or one grouping factor. If you have more than one factor, then we'll have to do a slightly more complicated ANOVA um, with a more complex post hoc analysis. And in another video, I'll show you how to do that at a later date. But for now, if you want to keep learning about statistics or any other topics in kinesiology, go ahead and click on one of the playlists and continue that learning journey. Thanks you guys for watching. Let me know if you have questions down in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.
What's up everybody? It is great to see your smiling faces today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run a one-way, um, 